Our top story in this afternoon is regarding Hong Kong. As China has warned pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong that the recently conducted primary elections could constitute a violation of the newly enacted national security law. Almost 600,000 residents turned up for the primary vote, which was aimed at choosing candidates for the legislative elections in the month of September. Beijing's liaison office in Hong Kong has described these primaries as illegal, and China alleges that a primary vote will affect the free and fair nature of elections in Hong Kong. The liaison office said that these primaries could possibly be a violation of Article 22 of the new security law. This article deals with the subversion of state power in Hong Kong, and it outlaws any efforts aimed at interfering and obstructing the functions of the Hong Kong government. China believes that pro-democracy activists are trying to obtain a majority in the city legislature and paralyze the government by vetoing the budget. Under the vague definitions of Article 22 of this new law, deadlocking the legislature and blocking the budget can be interpreted as crimes, even if they are performed in the spirit of democracy by elected representatives. As expected, Hong Kong's chief executive Carrie Lam has supported Beijing's position on the primary elections, and she has said that if the objective of the primaries is to obstruct governance, it could be a violation of the security law. If this so-called primary uh, election's uh, purpose is to achieve the ultimate goal of um, uh, delivering a, what they call a 35 plus with the objective of uh, objecting to resisting every policy initiative of the Hong Kong SL government, then it may fall into the category of subverting the state power. Uh, which is now one of the four types of offences under the new national security law. The turnout in support of pro-democracy parties has evidently concerned China, which took the approach of wait and watch as it wanted to understand the support for pro-democracy parties in the city-state. Now, for more details about this development, our correspondent Richard Kimber is joining us live from Hong Kong. Richard, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Now, a strong statement coming from China warning pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong that the recently conducted primary elections could constitute a violation of the security law. Now, we know that a huge number, in fact, 600,000 residents turned up for this vote. And now China is alleging that primaries are illegal. So tell us some consequences of this development and what has been the reaction of the pro-democracy activists. Well, the pro-democracy activists very much standing firm on this. They say that this uh, unofficial election, unofficial as it was, was still perfectly viable and there should be no reason to object to it. It was simply an exercise, they say, to better organise all of the many and varied democratic parties here into a more cohesive unit ahead of these September elections, just like primaries might exist in the US, for example. Um, the reason that the Beijing and Hong Kong governments are trying to interfere with this and make sure that this does not necessarily get the full back of the government is because this is not a typical legislative right. exercise here and they've been putting pressure on the organizers to make it clear that under the new security law this may not uh, be acceptable at all the organizers though saying that they don't see any breach of anything in the Hong Kong basic law with regards to this activity and indeed even in the scenario that Carrie Lam outlined there where the uh, the pro-democracy activist groups maybe get a majority in the legislature and even vote down the budget even that the organizers of this election say that is completely fine within the basic law and should not be criticized by Beijing or by the Hong Kong government because it's enshrined in the basic law that any um, majority party can vote down a government initiative. So that's right. basic democracy, they say. Right. Richard, I'd just like to focus on this Article 22 in the new security law. There's not much information about it in the public domain and it seems to be very vague since it deals with something called the subversion of state power in Hong Kong. Now, the Carrie Lam government has already supported Beijing's position on these elections. So who and how are those who turned out to vote? Are they fearing arrest, uh, persecution? Well, many of the people who did turn out to vote said they really said they had a civic duty to do so. And although they understood that there are concerns now under this security law, they said ultimately they had no choice. They want to make sure right. that the power of democracy is upheld in Hong Kong. The organizers were very concerned that because of this new law and because of articles such as the subversion article, many people will be scared off from coming out. So they were really pleased to see that more than three times the number of expected voters did turn out. But what's not really clear, and this is still emerging really every, every day or two, as more 
more cases relating to the security law end up in court, we're starting to understand more clearly how these articles will actually be interpreted in the Hong Kong judicial system, which after all is still independent of China, even if it's now working under this national security legislation. So even yesterday there was a case where some leading pro-democracy activists appeared in court on charges relating to the security law, and only when these cases are actually fully processed will many people in the judicial community start to fully understand exactly how articles such as this subversion right. article will indeed be interpreted in real court terms. Right. Now, I'd just like to move away from the subject of the national security law and focus on the COVID-19 situation in Hong Kong before we wrap up our discussion. Now, news reports are citing a third wave of infections in Hong Kong and health experts are urging the government to learn from social distancing mistakes and overhaul its quarantine exemption policy. So can you share some details about what could have led to this third wave of infections in Hong Kong? Well, the health officials here saying that really the public has become a little bit too complacent, a bit too lapsed over the last two or three months as right. the numbers of cases has really shrunk to almost nothing locally here for three weeks continuously. But there's suddenly been a spike in the last four or five days. But the crucial thing that health officials are concerned about is that it's the number of local cases for which they can't identify a specific source of infection. Previously, they've been very, very precise with saying that um, any given person who's been infected is likely to have picked it up from this restaurant or from that family member or from that taxi, being very, very specific based on the case of each person and their movements and so on. Now they're starting to find cases where they can't really pinpoint the origin of their infection and that's what's worrying people here which is why the pressure has been mounted on the government to introduce mm -hmm. what is effectively now the strictest restrictions that have been in place here since the beginning of the year. So the concern is that unless it's easier to try and identify the source of these cases then there's a very high chance of an exponential spread across the rest of the city. Right. All right Richard thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and for all your inputs on this story.